Welcome to the Argonauts. My name is Tyler and I live with my partner Ben on a 28 foot sailboat called Our Choice. We're both 23 years old, we're living on a budget and are definitely beginners when it comes to the liveaboard lifestyle. Subscribe to follow our journey as we travel slowly around the world. Hello, so in this video I'm going to talk to you about how we do our washing, how we wash our clothes on the boat and also I'm going to show you the work that we did on the boat whilst we were living in the boatyard for March and April. So Felix Doe Ferry and the boatyard are on the mouth of the River Deben, which is in Suffolk in the UK. Um, the town of Felix Doe is quite nearby, which is really handy because there's not too many facilities in and around where the boatyard is. I really enjoyed washing clothes by hand last summer while we were living on the Mooring Boy in Felixstowe. Um, yeah, it was, it was really nice, I really enjoyed doing that. But while we were living out of the water in the boatyard, the weather wasn't quite nice enough for us to be able to hang things out to dry properly. And so if we needed to do some washing, we would walk to a laundrette in Felixstowe. We're walking into Felixstowe to do some laundry because we don't have a washing machine on the boat. Heavier than you'd expect to put all in here. So we walk into Felixstowe quite often whenever we need to top up on fresh food or do a big load of laundry. It takes us about an hour to get there from here at the boatyard where our mooring is and an hour back walking. Um, but yeah, it doesn't ever really feel like it takes as long as it does because it's such a nice walk. You can literally walk the whole way along the beach and yeah, it's really lovely. You always keep me guessing I never seem to know what you were thinking And if some girl looks at you for sure your little eye will be winking I get confused cause I don't know where I stand and then you smile and hold my I actually really enjoy how living on the boat means that everyday tasks take a lot longer than I feel like they normally would. Um, I think it, it helps me to slow down and think about what it is that I'm doing at any given moment. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's a really good thing, um, especially with stuff like water, because we, we can only have a certain amount on board. We've got two flexible water tanks and then we keep three five litre bottles of drinking water on board as well. And yeah, just having that 
um, a certain amount that, you know, if we run out we've got to go and get more, we might not be able to go and get more all the time. Um, and yeah, I think it's a really good thing to be kind of forced to think about stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you all the things my heart's been and dying to be saying Just like a ghost you've been a heart in my dreams And now I know you're not what you seem Love is kind of crazy with a spooky little boy like you We did lots of work to the outside of the boat whilst we were living in the boatyard. Um, we, we had our wind turbine fixed as well and there was quite a lot of mould on board when we returned after spending some time with family over Christmas so there was lots of cleaning to do inside but yeah the majority of the jobs that needed doing were to do with the fact that this was the first time we'd seen the boat out of the water. The first thing that needed doing, and I think the most important thing as well, was working on the hull. Um, we started by scraping off all of the anti-foul that was already there. Um, we decided to do that because, like I said, we hadn't seen the boat out of the water before. Um, there were patches where it didn't look like there was any anti-foul. Um, and yeah, we thought if we scrape all of the paint off that's already there, we'll be able to get a much better look at the hull um, and we'll be able to get a much smoother finish as well and hopefully we won't need to do the job again next year. We'll be able to, the job will last a lot longer basically. When I say anti-foul, I'm talking about the paint that you use, the specific type of paint that goes on the bottom of the boat, on the hull, um, to which supposedly stops things growing on it, attaching to it, living there, and yeah, it keeps the bottom of the boat clean. Once we had scraped as much of the paint off of the bottom as we could, we sanded down the rest, um, got it as smooth as we could. Um, yeah, the, the scraping and sanding were definitely not the hardest jobs, but they took a lot of effort. We had dead arms for quite a while after that. Um, and yeah, we're covered from head to toe in blue dust as well. I think when it's done, maybe it'll add another third of a knot to our top speed. The keel, which is the fin at the bottom of the boat, required a bit more work than just scraping and sanding because it's made of iron, so there were a few small patches of rust. Um, we scraped off as much of the paint as we could in the same way as the rest of the hull and then we used a wire brush to get rid of as much rust as possible. Um, and then, yeah, we applied rust converter and followed that with spray on rust prevention as well, both all over the whole of the keel. 
In a few areas on the hull, on the bottom of the boat, we filled in some minor imperfections with epoxy resin filler. Uh, once that had dried, we sanded it back down and after that we were able to start working on the boat's white gel coat. So we scrubbed the deck and the white gel coat with soap and water before rinsing it all down and applying a stain remover to the gel coat which we left on for a few hours and then once we'd taken that off we were really surprised actually by how much of a difference it made. The boat looked so much newer, cleaner and whiter which yeah was great. Then we, after that, we waxed the gel coat, polished the gel coat, then waxed it again. And once all of that was finished, we rinsed the whole boat down one last time, um, including rinsing the hull at the bottom to get rid of any paint, dust, and bits that were still left there. And yeah, after all that, we were ready to start painting. We started off with a tin of grey anti-foul primer followed by two tins of hard anti-foul and then the final layer of self-polishing anti-foul. We, we used different colours for each layer so that we could clearly see where we had and hadn't been. Um, each layer was we just used up a whole tin basically, so we would go around once and then go back and add more paint in any areas that looked thinner. Um, the painting was definitely my favourite job that needed doing. I find it very therapeutic and it was nice to be painting something so big. Um, it was a bit tricky painting underneath the feet of the cradle, so because we're out of the water the boat is standing in. A big metal cradle with like legs um, so yeah we had to remove each one of those one by one um, and put like a barrel with a wedge of wood on top of it in its place kind of temporarily whilst we painted yeah underneath the feet of the cradle so yeah that took quite a long time um, and then once the boat was lifted up out of the cradle we were able to paint the bottom of the keel as well that had to be done last minute because obviously you can't get to that while the boat is standing on it once everything was finished it was amazing to see how much of a difference we had made um, the boat looked so much newer i think we were both quite surprised at how much of a difference the work we had done made um, yeah, it was really rewarding to see that and think that after having spent so many weeks working on it. I feel like I learned a lot more about the boat during that time as well and even just seeing it out of the water, um, yeah, I think I gained a lot more confidence in it too. We met so many lovely people while we were living in the boatyard. Um, I feel like you just bump into people a bit more when everyone's outside and working on their boat rather than everyone being spread out on their boys on the river. Um, but yeah, we got so much useful advice from people too, which really helped us out. And yeah, so the boat was lifted back into the water on the 30th of April. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment to let us know what you think as well.